You're listening to the Catholic Nurse Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Haugen, wife, mom, nurse, and Catholic life coach. The mission of this podcast is to coach Catholic women who work in healthcare to have less stress. Welcome, everybody. And if you're listening to this in real time, we have just started Lent. So that is super exciting, but it also gets to be a little bit stressful, if you will, or can be stressful because sometimes we add a bunch of extra things in, or we take some other things out, and it leads us to being a little bit crabbier maybe the first couple days. So, or at least that's what usually happens to me. So we're going to pray to get us started, and I don't really have a reflection or anything today. I just wanted to have like a simple prayer, and then I'm going to talk about your value and worth as a person and how we often misconstrue this with our humanness. So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. We just thank you for this time. We thank you for the season of Lent where we can refocus on Jesus. Thank you for giving us this time to help us get out the distractions in our life, to help us give up or detach from some of the things that we've become too attached to. We also thank you for this time to to give more. But most importantly, to use this time to draw closer to you, to deepen our relationship with you. So just thank you for that. And please help us to really in this Lenten season to really know how much we are so loved by you. That we can't mess it up. That we can't fail. That the only way that we can do that is if we choose to not come to you. But if we're always turning to you, trying to, striving to, even in our littleness and the ways we fail, that you love us ever so much more for that. Thank you again. <clears throat> Thank you for all of this. And in Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, so I want to talk about your value today. Um, I was listening to a podcast, and she was talking about, you know, your personal worth compared to, it was a business podcast. And so when you put your worth and you think your value is based off of how many sales you have, Or when you hit this benchmark and how you look at the world, right, of business people and you're like, well, they just have something. I don't have that. And so I'm not a business person. And how then we value, we think that that person has those things. And so we give ourselves less value and less worthiness and all that. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to look at this in a Catholic perspective and kind of twisted around, right? Because we all know that we all have value, right? As Catholics, we believe that every life at the moment of conception, that it has inherent value and worth, like no matter what, right? Like even if you're only born for minutes, if you live for minutes, even if that soul, if there was a miscarriage and that soul never, you know, got to see earth at all, um, if you're disabled, if you're elderly, like the, all of this, we have inherent value, right? We also know that we can't earn our way into heaven and that we are only worthy of heaven because Jesus is sacrificed death and resurrection on the cross, right? Like we, you can't buy your way into heaven. You can't piggy bank oh, I did this and this and this all the while sinning over here, right? Like you can't You can't do that, which I think, of course, God in his genius, right? Because he's God, knew that there would be people that would think they could do that. And so God was just like, you know what? I'm going to send my son and he's going to be born, born. I'm not just going to place him there as a 33-year-old and he's just going to appear and there's going to be singing in the skies and all these crazy things. Like, no, he was born as a baby 
He had to have his diaper changed. He nursed. He learned to then eat solid foods. He learned to walk. He learned his trade of his father, right? Like all of these beautiful things because God knew like nobody is, is better or worse as a human. You can't buy your way, but like, these are the fundamental truths, right? But like our brain wants to complicate things. And also society tells us that that's the exact opposite. And so I know, I know in my head that Jesus loves me, but I don't really deep down believe it in my heart, right? Like there's this, this disconnect there. And I, I think that is what when you become a saint or like, you know, Mother Teresa or Saint Pope John Paul II, like those are the most recent Pope or the recent saints that I know of that were alive when I was alive um, and have been declared saints. And so what I believe, and again, this is not a church teaching, I don't think, but what I believe is that that disconnect gets smaller for those people who work towards it so much like Mother Teresa did or Pope John Paul II. And of course, again, it only comes about because by the grace of God, right? Like you can't even do that on your own unless God allows it, unless he allows to show you something or or gives you that grace or that wisdom or whatever. But then we also have to take action ourselves, right? You can't just sit back and be like, Oh, well, I'm waiting for the day that God gives me the grace. Like, right? Like you have to pray, you go to mass, like you do the things, you you try to cut out those distractions to always draw you closer to closing that gap. Okay. And so for me, like I always want to, I want to connect my value with love. Okay. And for the sake of this podcast, we'll talk about value in how the world sees it. Okay. How much money we have, how many much material possessions we have how many TikTok and Instagram followers you have. And for me, this came up a couple days ago. So my husband manages our local grocery store. It is very small. It is very, it's a nonprofit and it's, it's very, it's community run. So like the community owns it and it's run by a board and it's just, it's awesome because we can do things like people can bring in food and, and you can have things like that. We have we have a cafe. It used to be ran as a cafe, you know, had licensing and all that stuff. But then we had to close that portion of it. And so now what we've been doing is we make food once a week. And we open that up to the community and they can come in. And people just want to come and visit and talk and, and have some food, right? And so what I do is I, I make homemade donuts. And my mom made them her parents made them and I have been making them for the grocery store. And so, um, I'll go in and I made them on Tuesday this week. I made them, I think last month I made them one time. And so (laughs) the, the guys that drink coffee in the morning that come in and they, that's how they start their day. Right. So they're a little older, but they just, they love these donuts. They talk about them all the time. Like Every time they see me, they ask when I'm going to make the donuts again. So I took five hours on Tuesday and I made donuts. I made about 400 donuts. They were all sold out. And the next day, one of those guys came over and was like, well, when are you going to make donuts again? <laughs> so like, I am exhausted. Okay. I need to recover first. But right. They're just, they're raving of how good they are. And it just, it felt amazing. I felt worthwhile. I felt like I added value to the store. I felt proud. And so why did I feel more valuable that day than the other days when I'm there helping? And my brain wants to tell me that it's because that I I made the donuts, right? Like that I did something different. That's, that's why I added value. But did I, how did I add value to there versus any other day that I do, right? I bake something, bake slash cook something every single day, right? For my family my family of eight, I bake and cook something every single day. The difference was my thoughts. And so I'm going to break that down. So usually when I bake or cook for my kids and family, someone says something. So I think they don't appreciate me. They don't value me. I'm, I'm not worth their time. Okay. Now the 
the other day when I made the donuts, I baked slash cooked at the store. Someone said something and I thought they appreciate me. They value me. And this is worth my time. Okay. And so how do you think I showed up differently that day? Right? Like that Tuesday, I, I didn't snap at the kids. Like I was just like, it's fine. Whatever. Like one of the girls broke a mug and I was just like, it's okay. Things break. Right. But on the days when I'm telling myself they don't appreciate me, they don't value me. I'm not worth their time. Like I don't show up like that. And so the only difference between those two things is that is, are my thoughts about it. Right. And and your brain wants to say, no, 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 no. Like it's the circumstances. You you did something for these guys. Like they did appreciate you. And they did. But we know that as healthcare workers, as moms, as spouses, the person might not verbalize it, but this work is valuable. In fact, like it's probably the most valuable work we'll ever do is raising kids and having like being dying to your spouse, even when you don't want to. Right. And so the last few years of our marriage have been extremely difficult, mostly because I am placing my value in how my husband does or doesn't show up for me. And this is so painful for me. I'm constantly telling myself that I'm not worth the effort And so even when he does something amazing, I attach a reason that he really did it for himself and not giving myself any worth or value in, in the process. Okay. So, so for example, if he, if he brings me home a treat or something to be like, Hey, I brought you home this treat. And he also brought himself one. I, I tell myself, well, it's because he wanted a treat and he felt bad if he was going to eat it in front of me, which isn't true. There's been many, many times where he buys himself a treat and he eats it right in front of me. And I don't care because it's coconut or something that I don't like. And so I just, just the way that I I talk to myself and I discredit, discredit myself of like, well, see, you're not valued. You're not worthy. Okay. And so this can be in your marriage, can be with your coworkers, your boss, your in-laws, maybe your parents. And, and just to counteract that, this is what I'm working on. I'm valuing myself as a person, okay? A daughter of Christ, that I often remind myself that it's okay to have feelings, but I don't need to act on them. I acknowledge and recognize the little things I do for myself. And sometimes I even state out loud, like, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you. Like when you, when you say that out loud, like, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Like I instantly can feel a shift in my body. And I could do that any time throughout the day, right? If I made my if I make supper, I can say, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate that you did that for me. Like I can compliment compliment myself on how I look or how I like my hair that day. And when I feel myself getting upset and angry and undervalued, like try to pause and see myself how Jesus loves me a beautiful child who tries so hard on her own and then always comes rushing back to him for help. Someone who is stubborn, but lets her guard down to completely trust him. And when I think of Jesus loving me, how I love my kids, I instantly feel love, accepted, worthiness, right? All of us struggle with feeling loved and accepted. It affects everything we do. And I, I often, our priest often talks about pausing and just sitting in the gate, the loving gaze of Jesus to picture, take your favorite picture image icon of Jesus and just picture that in your mind and picture him so lovingly gazing upon you because that's where it is, right? Like he loves you so much and he wants you to say nice, loving things to yourself. And he wants you to, to see how much he really, truly does love you. And so I think during Lent, like that is going to be my main focus and doing that. I am, I am cutting out alcohol, sugar, gluten, and dairy. And the whole goal of that is to have less brain fog and 
then to and then do uh, 30 minutes of Lexio Divino a day and a rosary every day. And so that is my goal. I joined a, a program to sign up and track, kind of track that. And so hopefully like that helps me personally. I'm very much a competitor. And so I get very competitive. And so I want to win. But I also wanted to be where like I'm really doing this because I I feel that, yeah, my when I the only reason I get out to exercise some mornings are to go have my coffee with cream. Like that's it. Okay, I think I need to detach from that a little bit. Oh, I'm also exercising 30 minutes a day, which includes like walking or something. Just it could be gentle stretching or intense exercise, whatever it is, but 30 minutes of exercise a day. And so that's what I'm doing for Lent. Um, so I'm excited to see where that takes me. And I'm going to be posting that on social media so you can follow me. I'm a, it's Catholic nurse coach on TikTok, Instagram, social media, Facebook. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. It's a little bit in now and it's not, it's not intense, intense, but there are moments when I'm like, oh, I can't eat that. Shoot. <laughs> So, so anyway, excited to see what happens out of that, but, um, come and join me, book a free call. I help you get out of the vicious cycle of expecting everyone else to make you happy. Because I know for me, I've fallen into that trap all the time where I think if my husband only did this, then I would be happy. And I place all of that on him. And that's impossible, right? Like no other human can make us truly happy. That only comes from God. We can only rely on him completely. And so come and book a call with me, catholicnursecoach.com. And I also invite you to join my support group that also has started. You can go to catholicnursecoach.com and up in the right-hand corner, there is a tab for support group. So I invite you to go there, um, that's going to be so awesome. It's great. So we've, we talk about, um, basically just some struggles and how to balance work and home life and struggles that are going on at work. And it's just, it's a very safe place for you to come and share all the heavy things that are on your heart. So I'm praying for you and let's go change our world.